This upgrade for Adagio Bankrec 9.3a has many new features and enhancements to make Bankrec easier to use. The data structure for batches has changed to allow new features to be possible, such as integrating with Adagio Doc Store to attach PDFs at either the batch level or for individual entries. The batch list grid can now be sorted by either the batch number or batch description. Batches can now be set as ready to post for manually entered, retrieved, or imported batches. And entry templates can be configured for controlling field tabbing and access, with independent setup for receipts, payments, and bank transfers. There are many new fields available for transaction entries. All transaction types support the ledger accounting date for assigning a fiscal period to a transaction different than the transaction date would. A second description allows for more information to be included. And receipts and payments will use the batch optional fields defined in receivables and payables, respectively. Customer receipt entry now supports selecting a payment method from the list defined in receivables. This includes selecting payment methods associated with credit cards to allow entry and retrieval of standard or APS payments online credit card information. And printed receipt specification forms now support formatted addresses and both customer names. And the bank transfer entry screen has had a minor facelift to replace the radio button selection for from and to bank code indication with specific fields for each bank code for easier understanding. Distribution details for receipts and payments have new enhancements to be consistent with Adagio payables. Ledger statistical units are supported when an account is selected that has a unit defined. Distributions for all transaction types support selecting a taxable distribution code for entering the pre-tax amount and the program calculates a tax, including the tax recoverable percentage. And distribution sets support not only these features, but also the ability to define the set with auto distribution of amounts as a percentage of a given total. There are other major features related to batches. Now available is a separate archive batch system for the creation of batches and transactions separate from active batches for the purpose of copying batches for recurring transactions or maintaining batches and entries reserved for the future. To keep archive and active batches differentiated, you can give each batch system a unique color for the screens to remind you which one you're within. The batch status inquiry has been enhanced. It can now be opened from a button on the toolbar and you can select one or more batches for reprinting batch listing or posting journal reports and recover batches created in bank rec or accidentally deleted. Bank reconciliation has had many useful improvements. If you need to reconcile only a portion of a deposit, either from your bank or credit card statement, it is now possible to edit the deposit reconciliation details and choose to split the deposit into two. Select one or more receipts from anywhere on the list, click the split deposit button, and enter a unique bank reference to move the selected receipts into and these can be now reconciled or otherwise handled separately. Deposits and receipts can now be reversed in a similar way as payments. When either is reversed, not only is the pending status changed, but the post button will turn into a post reversal button. Posting can happen now, rather than waiting for a complete reconciliation. A data backup can be made prior to any reconciliation posting. This will create batches in the same way as NSF processing does, but without any customer or bank charges. This means that when batches are posted, all customer receipts accounting will be reversed, and paid invoices will be restored as unpaid. 
When you reverse a vendor cash invoice, you now have the option to reverse the invoice portion along with the payment, using the prompt setting for reversing cash invoices from Adagio Payables. It is no longer only always or never. When you reconcile a payment with error, you now have the ability of modifying the ledger account for the error portion by setting an option on the bank to allow an error account override. If you have to reconcile a portion of your posted transactions in BankRec, with many more transactions having later dates, you can now enter a cutoff date to hide all transactions after this date in the list. This makes it easier to work with a smaller and more focused list. If a transaction has a pending status change, it will be excluded from hiding regardless of the date. And if Adagio Doc Store is integrated, you can attach a PDF directly to the reconciliation as a whole, such as the bank statement, or view PDFs for posted transactions that already have attachments. There have been other significant improvements when importing bank statement files and reconciling to your posted transactions. It had been possible before to set up an import template using an Excel format and perform the import from the file menu. But now you can specify on the bank that the file format is Excel, so that when you import from within the reconciliation process, you can select the Excel file to import. If you regularly process transactions for the same amount, and there was a possibility to accidentally auto-match transactions that shouldn't have been matched, you can now specify on the statement rule to have all imported records that meet the rule criteria to be excluded from auto-matching. If the Hide Pending checkbox is selected, and you manually match imported and posted transactions together, you can now more easily refresh the grids by pressing the F9 key, rather than having to double-click the checkbox. If you clear the pending status change on one match transaction, this will also reset the match transaction on the other side. While you are in the middle of a reconciliation and you need to verify other information, you can now close the reconciliation window with matching and changes intact. Then come back to the reconciliation and continue where you left off, without the imported and matched transactions on the left being removed. To accommodate this, if you mark an imported record as deleted, this will reveal a Purge Deleted button, so that you can choose to remove it now. Otherwise, these will be removed as part of the regular reconciliation posting process. When you edit an imported transaction, you can now update either of the descriptions for sending more interesting text to the created batch entry. And when it comes time to create a batch for unmatched entries, there is now a company profile option to suppress the question to post the batch immediately, if you always want to verify the batch contents before posting. NSF Receipt Processing has improvements to make these transactions easier to use. Rather than starting the procedure from within the bank inquiry area, there is now a new dedicated location from the maintenance menu in NSF Receipts. A grid now displays all the outstanding NSF receipt transactions that have been entered but not yet processed. These transactions can be edited or deleted, and a listing report is available to print outstanding NSFs for a range of banks or dates before they are processed. Click the New button to create a new NSF receipt entry. From this Find screen, select the bank code to which the receipt was posted. This will activate the Load button, which will list all receipts for the bank. Use any other selection criteria for the deposit reference, customer number, or date and amount ranges, so that when you load the list, it is shorter and more relevant. When you locate the desired receipt for a customer, highlight it in the grid and either double-click it or click the OK button. This brings up the familiar NSF Receipt Edit screen 
where you can assign document numbers, dates, amounts, and accounts for the transactions that will be created. A new 12-character auto-incrementing editable reference value is available to keep the transaction unique. If Adagio Doc Store is integrated and any PDFs were attached to the receipt, you can view them here, or attach new PDFs to the transaction. Click OK to save. When you're ready to process, multi-select the required transactions and click the Create Batch button. This will perform the same NSF processing as in previous versions, creating batches for bank rec and receivables. And a new NSF Posting Journal report is now available to keep an audit trail of the transactions that were created. When printing customer receipts, either from within batches or receipt history, you may now choose multiple destinations for output, or have the preferred customer method for the receipt be determined, as specified using new preferred and allowed send methods from the customer record. When Adagio Doc Store is integrated, printing receipts will automatically store a PDF copy of the receipt, without having to enable an archive PDF option and attaching PDFs to historical receipts is supported. Also, the Receipt History Grid now supports sorting not only by the receipt number, but also by customer or date, to make it easier to find history receipts or multi-selecting them for printing or emailing. The Deposit Slip Report is also improved. Now that payment methods can be saved with receipts, it is possible to group cash, checks, and any other method in separate sections of the deposit slip, along with a summary total of each payment method in each section and also at the end. Read the complete list of features and changes from the release notes. Watch another video on this Adagio program from the playlist. Or subscribe to the Adagio YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.